Hi friends, today we will make a simple but quite good circuit of the converter from 12 to 220 volts. The circuit is interesting because it has only four transistors, four resistors and a pair of transformers which make it very simple and easy to repeat. I slightly changed the circuit of the generator since in the original version the winding of the first transformer is rather complicated. As a result, I got the circuit. The converter consists of two parts, a generator and an amplifier. The generator is super simple. Essentially, it is a push-pull auto-generator built on a pair of transistors of the same structure. The generator pumps a pulse transformer, which controls a pair of powerful switches. Because the generator is a two-stroke, the transistor is switching and each forms its half-cycle. Despite the simplicity, the circuit is very reliable thanks to the galvanic isolation between the generator and the power section. As you have noticed, the converter operates at high frequency, that is, the output frequency differs from the network's 50 Hz. In this case, it is about 10 kHz. The frequency depends on the primary winding of the galvanic isolation transformer. In the master oscillator are used transistors of NPN structure BD139. The generator is so simple that I decided not to make PCB. The current consumption of the generator is from 50 to 80 mA. The transistor doesn't overheat, but anyway, installed on the heatsink. They are insulated from the radiator by a mica gasket. Limiting resistors at base circuit can be from 4.7 to 6.8 kilo ohm. First transformer plays a dual role as a master and at the same time provides isolation between the generator and the power unit. It has four separate windings, two of which are connected to the midpoint and form a primary winding. Magnetic core is not critical. You can use cores from IPCOS N8797 and so on. For the shape of core, I advise to use rings since the working frequency of the generator is in the sound range. For the shape of core, I advise to use ring since the working frequency of the generator is in the sound range. With other shapes of cores, rather unpleasant whistle is heard. With the ring core, it's almost not audible. The size of the core I used is now in front of you. I strongly advise isolating them before winding, which I didn't do. The primary winding made with a pair of twisted together 0.5 mm wires. The number of turns is from 20 to 25, and they are uniformly stretched throughout the ring. After winding, we must do phasing. That is, we must connect the beginning of one half winding with the end of the other. It is done as shown in the photo. Next, we need to wind the master or control windings for powerful transistors. They are completely identical and contain 10 turns, wound with the same wire as the primary one. For the equivalence of the windings, I again use pair of wires. Next, you need to check the efficiency of the generator. For these purposes, one of the secondary windings is loaded with an incandescent lamp for 2.5 to 6 volts and connects the generator to a 6 to 12 volt source. The lamp should light up. On the oscilloscope, we can see that the operating frequency of the oscillator is about 10 kHz. The amplitude is 10 volts. The pulses are clear. If anyone is interested, a link to the purchase of such an oscilloscope is in the description. Now, let's go to the power section. The most important part is a step-up transformer. It has two primary windings connected to the midpoint, as in the case of the previous transformer, and one secondary, which generates an increased voltage of 220 volts. I again took the ring core, but this time the dimensions are larger, or more precisely, 45, 28, 8 mm. I advise you to use the IPCOS N87 core. We need two rings, they must be glued together. For these purposes, you can use super glue, epoxy, or tighten with adhesive tape, as in my case. I strongly advise to smooth the sharp edges. The finished magnetic core is isolated. I use the heat resistant tape. The primary winding consists of 22 turns with a midpoint, so it is 11 turns in the shoulder. For winding, I use two 1 mm wires. It is important that the total diameter of the primary winding was from 2 to 3.5 mm, but the number of wires and their diameter may be different. Next, the shoulders were connected in series to form the midpoint. It was done in the previously shown manner. Then, power transistors are connected and the circuit can be started. At this stage, the secondary winding is unnecessary. I would turn one as a test to study some processes and understand how many turns are needed for the output voltage of 220 volts. For the test, I put germanium transistors produced by the former Soviet Union. They are more than 40 years old. The circuit worked and worked very well. 
The generator worked very stable at input voltages from 9 to 15 volts. The critical frequency drops were not noticed. The filling is also stable and around 50%. Secondary winding in my case contains 220 turns and is wound with a wire of 0.5 mm. How I winded it, I will show in the next video. By the way, here is a more colorful picture of connecting all the windings. This circuit has a lot of advantages, simplicity, the minimum number of components, cheapness and reliability. It can be said it is not afraid of short circuits at the output. Of the disadvantages, the following should be mentioned. High output frequency, lack of voltage stabilization. But this converter can be used for some serious purposes. We will also talk about this another time. In a week, there will be a second video on this topic, in which we will talk about possible problems related to tuning, eliminating them, selecting components, and of course, we will look at what it is capable of. Please, don't forget to evaluate the video and share with friends. Have a nice day! With you was Kassian TV. Goodbye.